two, one. Hi everybody, Mr. Higgins, and welcome to the first project of 2019-2020 school year. We are going to make a custom background in Photopea. This project is geared toward doing a standard computer background, but the way that I put this project together, you can do the exact same project to do a cell phone screen or any other screen, 4K TV, whatever you want. So this project is going to be in five parts. First part is going to be finding your background image in Google Images. Your second part is that we're going to make a name in Sketch.io, which is one of the best programs to make any custom generated text. Part three is going to be putting it all together in Photopea. Part four is going to be finding and adding more PNG elements for your background. Part five is going to be adding some rad special effects to your background and also going over how to save it so you can set it to your background. Before we jump into part one, I just want to highlight some some of the backgrounds that are playing behind me, you can see that other students have used. They've gotten really creative, bringing in all kinds of different images, playing with the color of, of the background and the text and the special effects. Part one, finding your background image in Google Images. So first thing that we'd wanna do is we are gonna search a background. If there's a specific background that you want, that you know you want to use for your background, you can search that out. But if you just want to search for a generic background, we're just going to type background in and we're going to click images for Google image search. Notice there's all these buttons up at the top. You can kind of click these and those will add blue backgrounds. If you want to turn that off, you left click it again and you can just kind of go through to get some examples. You can also click more than two. So I could get blue and I could click pattern. So that would just show me blue patterns. I could also click flower and that would show me blue flowers. You get the idea. This will just kind of help you search around, click around, see some different backgrounds, figure out one that would work for you. What we're gonna do is when you found an image that you like, I'm gonna right click and we're gonna save image as. I'm going to go to, you can navigate around, you wanna to go to your downloads folder here. And in downloads, what you wanna do is click new folder. That'll create a new folder or you can right click and go down to new and click folder here. So what we want to name this is project one background. And we want to make sure that we save everything in here for project one. It's really important to save all your files in the right folder so you don't lose them. Starting part two, we are going to go to Sketch.io to make our name. Sketch.io we're going to use for making text and for drawing. It, this is one of the best websites you can use on the internet for making free text. When we open up Sketch.io, what we want to do first is we want to come down here to the bottom left and we want to click new where it's a size of screen. You want to left click that and you want to click size of screen. So click over here, make sure it's set to size of screen. What that's going to do is change these numbers to fit whatever screen you're using. So if you're on a cell phone, it's going to change those numbers to be that the size of your screen is. So you'll be able to make a perfect background for it. Then what we want to do is click transparent. So left click transparent, size of screen, click create. The first thing that we want to do is bring in the background that you had so we can see the colors. So how we're going to do that is we're going to click clip art and we're going to click load your own image. And I'm going to go over here and I'm going to click on the background that I found before. We're going to delete this, but we want it as a reference. So when we make our name, we can make sure that the colors look good. So I'm going to click text. And then when I, once I click text, I'm going to click here and I'm going to drag box over and then I'm going to type my full name. I'm going to type Sean Patrick Higgins. Okay. Now, obviously black probably doesn't look that great on my background, but what I can do here is once I select it, I can come up here and I can change the font. And then right here, what I can do is I am going to change my fill here. And this is how I change the color right here. You'll see all the colors that you can pick, you can move this up and down. So if I wanted to pick pink, that would kind of match the purples. You can also click over here to linear. So notice there's a linear, and if I click that, it'll kind of have a gradient. I can also scroll down. It looks like there's some pink and purples if I wanted to try to match those colors. Once I, I have my name and I have a color I want, there is also another thing that you can do, which is you can turn off, if you click this 0% here, click that once, it'll go up to 100 and you can add an outline. So I'm gonna change that to black. And notice down here we have line width, so I can move that. And if I wanted to, I could add a big black outline. So when you're happy with your name, what you wanna do is you're gonna click on your background and then you're gonna press the delete button on your keyboard. Then you're gonna take your name and you're gonna make it real big. You want it to fill the whole screen. You can put it in the center if you want. And now we're gonna save. 
So to save, we're going to go to the bottom left here, and we're going to click Export, and we're going to click Download PNG. And you could click save it as my name, or just click Save. And now you've got your name and your background and we're ready to go into Photopea and put that together. Welcome to part three and where we are going to put our background and our names together in Photopea. Photopea is going to be our main image editor that we're going to use this year and it's a lot more powerful than Pixar. So I'm really excited to start to use it. So once you open up Photopea, the first thing that you want to do is click new project. Now, remember when I said, when you click new, you should click size of screen. And whatever that number is, is what we're gonna put in Photopea. If you have a cell phone, it'll show a different number. And you wanted to make a cell phone background, you put that in here. While mine is a HD screen, I know the ones at school are 1280 by 1024. So I'm just gonna use that. Then I'm gonna change the background to transparent. Okay. So 1280, 1024, transparent. I'm gonna click create. First thing that we do is now we wanna bring our background in. So we wanna up here on the top left, we click file, then we click open and place. And then we can bring in our background. So I'm going to click this image to bring in the background. Just notice the corners. There's these four dots. Um, you can take these from the corners to make it bigger or smaller. Notice you can really stretch it out. And sometimes that doesn't look good. If you hold down shift, that'll prevent it from stretching. So if you want to make it bigger, but you don't want to stretch it out, make sure that you hold down the shift button when you make it bigger. When you're happy with your image, I'm going to click the check mark to set it. Now what we want to do is open our name. So we're going to do that same thing. We're going to go file, open in place, and we're going to go find our name. So this is the second name I generated. Same thing here if you want to make it bigger or smaller. If you hold down shift and use the sides, you can do that. You can change the size right when you bring it in, but say that you, I'm not actually happy with this anymore and I want to change the size, I want to show you how to do that. If I wanted to change the size, I go to edit, free transform, and that'll bring that box back up. So if I wanted to squish it, I could, but remember if you hold down shift and use the corners, that'll prevent it from distorting. So at this point, we have our basic background without any other elements, and what we could do is save. So we're gonna go to File, Save as a PSD. That's what we wanna do with every single project. We gotta save every project twice. I'm gonna save as a PSD, and I'm gonna name this my name. So I'll do Higgins Project 1 Basic Background. And I'm going to click Save. Now what we want to do is go to File, Export as a PNG. And you can name it the same thing. Just make sure your quality is set up to 100% and save. That creates a save point just in case you mess up. We can go back. So now we are going to go to part four, which is bringing in some extra background elements. And this image that I have here is kind of, it looks like the night sky. It's kind of cool. So I'm going to type in moon, stars, type moon. And I'm going to click Images. Now here's the important part for getting elements for your background. You're going to click tools, left click tools, left click color, and then click transparent. What this is going to give you is transparent images. And those are images like stickers are to GIFs that they don't have a background. So you can really easily use them. I'm just going to click on one and see what it looks like. Notice it'll load up. How you identify a PNG is you'll see that white and gray. That means it's invisible. So one, if you see that white and gray, it means you're good. I'm going to right click and I'm going to save image as left click, save image as, and you're going to save that to your project one background folder. Once you have a couple PNGs that you're going to add to your background, you're good to go. That's just how you search for PNGs to bring in. How we bring them into our background is pretty much the same way. We're going to go to file, open in place, and I'm going to grab my moon. And so notice it's really big. So if I hold down shift and I take it down from the corners again, I can kind of put it around or up here, right? I am also going to go to file, open in place. I have some lighting effects. I, this is called a lens flare. So I just searched for a lens flare in a PNG. So I was just gonna take that lens flare. I can kind of move it around. I can also, if I wanted to put it behind the moon, so I'm gonna click okay. If I wanted to put it behind the moon, notice over here, I can left click my layer and I can drag it down. So it's behind the moon or on top of the moon. So if you move these layers around, and sometimes you might accidentally put something behind your background, that means you won't be able to see it anymore. So make sure that your background layer is on the bottom, okay? One thing you can do, which is kind of cool, you can right click a layer and you can click duplicate layer. So then there's two layers at one spot. And you can kind of move that around if you want. So when you've placed at least two different PNGs on your background, you've got your name, you've got at least two PNGs, you're done with the basics. 
All we have left is special effects, and I'm gonna go over that right now. For part five, special effects in Photopea, I just wanna teach you two basic special effects. So I'm gonna make sure that I click the layer I wanna add my special effect to, and so this is the moon layer, and what I'm gonna do is right click, and up at the top there's, it's called blending options. So you left click blending options, and what these are called are layer styles now. So there's all kinds of different layer styles. You can click them back and forth, but there are just two that I wanna talk about right now that are generally the most useful. I'm gonna click drop shadow. And so notice behind the moon, a shadow has come up. I'll turn that on and off. Click on my drop shadow here. So I can make that shadow come or go. I can change the angle of that shadow. But so notice if I have that shadow, it kind of looks like it's over top the other things. It really makes it pop out. The other one I wanna show is outer glow. So. I'm gonna click back to the moon, I'm gonna click blending options, and I'm gonna turn off the drop shadow, and I'm gonna turn on the outer glow. Outer glow is basically a way to do a highlight around or a line around it. So if I click on outer glow, I if I click down here, this is gonna show me the color, right? So I can pick any color I want if I wanted that kind of, maybe I want that orange to match. Or I can maybe match the color, the text color. That's probably a good idea, I like that one. Okay, so if you move that. It lets you create that little color line there. And you can mess around. Sometimes you can make some really cool effects with um, with your outer glow. So those are just two different special effects. You can experiment with some of the other ones as well. I really like drop shadow and outer glow. Those can both be pretty cool. If you look at the examples on the board and in the digital presentation, there'll be a couple there. All right, click OK. And when you're ready, when you have some special effects, when you have at least two PNGs on in your name on your background, then what we're going to do is the same as we did before in part three. We're going to save as a PSD, and you can save that as your name, project one, final. Click save, and then sit, export as a PNG, and click save, and do that same thing where it's your name, project one, final. And when you have that saved, the way you set that to your background is you can click that little arrow here and you can go show in folder or you could go to your downloads folder. You right click your image and you do set as desktop background. And then when I go back to my desktop, it is gonna be my background. So hopefully your backgrounds are looking amazing right now. And there's just one last part to this project, which is, to take everything you've done together and now we're gonna make it into a cell phone background. Now, if you don't have a cell phone, that's totally okay. You could make this cell phone for a parent or guardian. You just need to know what phone they have so we can get the proper resolution. So you can just transform that background in Photopea to fit whatever cell phone you or your parent or guardian or anybody you wanna make a cell phone background for has. So I'm just gonna take you through that real quick. What do you do? Just go to Google and type in what is the resolution of Moto G7, iPhone 7, Samsung S8, whatever that phone is, and it will tell you what the resolution is. And what we do is we go back to Photopea and we can go new and we're just gonna type those in. The key is because we want a vertical background instead of a horizontal background, we wanna make sure the bigger number is the height. So this is for an iPhone 7. I'm gonna jump in here and I'm gonna type that in 1334 width 750. Now I can run that same process that And then when you're finished with it, uh, same situation as before, just go to export, save as a PNG, then you're gonna email that to yourself and then you are going to set that as your background on your phone. And it should be pretty straightforward and you're gonna see something like that. That's just how you make a computer background and that's how you make a cell phone background. There's a lot of more advanced skills that you can add on top of that and we'll go over that in the next few projects. So I'm really excited to see what you make and have a wonderful time till I see you next. All right, goodbye. cell phone background, right?